The case of a Norwood soldier accused of slaughtering 17 Afghan civilians has taken a new turn. The U.S. military says they now have a better understanding of the case, while Bale's lawyers say the military is holding out when it comes to the evidence. Ben has the reality check you won't see anywhere else. It's such an important story, and yet one that's being covered by the media with such little interest. Staff Sergeant Robert Bales, who attended Norwood High School just miles from here, has been charged with leaving his military base in Afghanistan in the middle of the night, slaughtering Afghan villagers, then burning their bodies, and then returning to base. And all of it, the military says, was done by Staff Sergeant Bales and Bales alone while he was drunk. As Reality Check told you two weeks ago, the military's original story here, it didn't quite add up with the investigation that was conducted by Afghani officials or with the eyewitness reports first shared with Reuters. An Afghani parliamentary probe team has concluded an investigation and says up to 20 American soldiers were involved in what happened. It's based on interviews with witnesses. They say it does not add up to one lone soldier. The team spent two days in the province where this all happened. They interviewed the families, tribal leaders, survivors, and they collected evidence. And what they say they found indicates that that attack lasted for one hour, and it involved two separate groups of American soldiers. The two villages where these massacres happened, they are one and a half kilometers apart. That's just under one mile. Since our report, the U.S. military has updated their version of events. Investigators now say they believe that Bell split the slaughter into two episodes, returning to his base after the first attack and then later slipping away again to kill again. Two American officials leaked this information to the press, but they did so anonymously. Now, what the military officials did not explain through this leak is how Bells would have walked to one village, which would have been a round trip of two kilometers, carried out the slaughter of civilians, including burning their bodies, and then walked back. Then, left again the same night, walked another round trip of two kilometers, carried out another attack, and then returned to base again, all of it without drawing attention from anyone. And since our report, we have also learned that the attorney for Bells, John Henry Brown, well, he now says that he's facing an information blackout by the military that's preventing him from putting together a defense. So what does that blackout consist of? Well, Brown says when his team attempted to interview the injured civilians who were being treated in a Kandahar hospital, they were denied access to those civilians, and they were told they would have to coordinate with the prosecution. The next day, prosecutors interviewed those injured civilians without Brown's team. Then, Brown's office found out shortly afterward that those civilians were all released from the hospital, and there was no contact information for any of them. What's more, Brown says this, in addition, we are being denied access to the injured civilian's medical records that are in the possession of the government, which makes it even more impossible for us to try to locate and interview these crucial witnesses. The prosecution is withholding the entire investigative file from the defense team, while the potential witnesses scatter into the unknown and potentially inaccessible areas in Afghanistan. So here's what you need to know. In no way am I trying to make a case for Staff Sergeant Bells or proclaiming his innocence. But what I am making a case for is for the facts to come out. Why would prosecutors not allow the defense to interview witnesses or victims? The way this case is being handled is anything but transparent. As is the process of anonymous sources leaking information. Listen, I know it's common practice in media, but it also allows for a lack of responsibility for where that information is coming from and whether or not it's truly accurate. And that is Reality Check. If you would like to make your voice heard in the story, you can head over to Ben's Facebook page. You can find it by searching Ben Swan WXIX.